track, traction or something. You got shot and killed today? I did see that. Yeah, what's his name? I don't know. My the, my 14-year-old says it's her favorite rapper, and I was like, what's his name? She's like, I can't spell it. And I'm like, well, then how the fuck is it your favorite rapper? She's yeah. texting me about it. It's, uh, I, I was thinking about getting adjectives tattooed all over my face like Post Malone did. You should, dude. So that Stay way, away or whatever. It says. Yeah, that way people know what to expect when I'm coming. Got like, diamonds by the bone load. My friends don't call me psycho. Oh yeah, sing it, sing <laughs> it, brother. Because seriously, he got always tired tattooed on his cheekbones. Did he really? And, and I can agree with that. I, I can get behind stay that. Stay away. You know, he he tried out for like I can't remember what the name of the metal band is, but like in 2015, he tried out in guitar, and it's like a fairly famous metal band. Uh-huh. And he didn't make it because he broke a string. An huh. audition. So that metal band's, like, fucking responsible for the bullshit mumble rap that we nice. have to hear now. I totally get, like, deluded loser tattooed on my forehead and, like... <laughs> well, people already know that. I mean, Optimistically you know. naive on my oh, chin. Oh, shit, I just hit You just something. murdered an animal. I think it was a tree branch, but it's an organism, too. So, yeah, that's what I was... Th- what was it? Optimistically what? Uh, optimistically naive. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, ignorance is bliss. Is that another way to say that? Yeah. I probably would put that on my forearm, though, in big cursive writing. <laughs> like so, mine? Yeah, so people know that I'm a deep thinker. Yeah. That's why I got it. Yeah, that's why anybody that has words <laughs> scrawled all over their arm, they're deep thinkers. So deep enough to not come up with something creative artwork. I'm yeah. just going to say exactly what I'm thinking. They're skin deep. You understand? <laughs> you understand? Yeah. God. A, a colleague of mine at the Retail Paradise that Gainfully employs me and I were having a combo a few weeks ago when the royal wedding was going down. Oh, Jesus. He, he was like, oh, oh, you get invited to the royal wedding? Pa, 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 pa. I said no. <laughs> Jeez, he sounds fun. And I said no. No, I didn't. And I said, but if I have a wedding, I'll probably invite them. Oh, and, that would be, that's a good and, move. And then we started saying oh, we I started would send you at least a hundred dollars i i would hope so right i They'd would like, hope Isn't so is this your third cousin uh, we, <laughs> we, <laughs> what they say to wedding crashers i i i got my hair cut by barbara bill today and he was saying oh, oh gotta go down to indiana my, <laughs> my woman's got her niece her she's getting married slap a 50 dollar bill in the card and i'm gone that's how you do it right that's how you do it yeah i mean i don't do 50 well no. maybe if it's family i don't know he's pretty generous yeah. But yeah, so we were spitballing 30. back and forth, and I said, well, you know what? I would just reach out to a bunch of random celebrities and invite them to my wedding to see. Sure. So one of them would have to do a publicity stunt. You and, think, yeah. And actually, I, I, I settled on, I think Post Malone would actually show up. What else has he got to do? That's what I said. <laughs> He's like, you got any girls that are under 25? He's like, shit, I could play Xbox tomorrow. <laughs> he comes strolling in. I'm a, I'm a drink your beer. I'm a fuck your bridesmaid. I'll play Xbox tomorrow. It'll be there tomorrow. I'm a fuck your bridesmaid. Yeah. You got open borrow. You got open borrow. <laughs> we going to party all night. Liquor oh. by the boatload. <laughs> uh, my uh, my kids love that song. That we, psycho song. Uh. We just wrote a Post Malone song. Yeah, we did. And it's better than any Post Malone song. You know what's better than any Post Malone song? Uh, any other musical artist oh, ever. Drop that beat, D-Boy. Drinking summer shandy on Thursday. We so motherfucking out here though. We never been this out here. Woo! <laughs> Well, I've been working like a working man do. Got my act together, gonna walk all over you. Pressure pushing down on me, pushing down on you. Shit, let's raise the roof. Woo! About time, it's the era of the rebels. Cloud nine in the era of the vessels. Generation fearless, got a taste for weirdness. Flow on fire, that's the way my beard is. Hard times, jump starting the grind. It's all good, y'all. Things fall apart sometimes. Let it go, let me know when you're ready, though. Don't push me, cuz to the edge, I'm close. When the time comes. 
drums, or ride for something, or live to be nine and then just die for nothing. Speak their heart, your baby, speak their mind, and I'ma play their part, and I'ma freak that rhyme one time for you. Rhyme one time for you. I'm an island, man. There ain't nothing else by me, man. And I drink enough whiskey to float a battleship around this bitch any motherfucking how. Welcome to the Miserable Retail Slave Show. We're coming to you from Tommy's car outside hey. beautiful Flint, Michigan, USA. My name is Randy. That's Tommy. Yeah. He's driving Miss Daisy. I'm Miss Daisy. <laughs> I'm driving you, huh? I'm a delicate flower. I'm driving my Mally Boo. How is everybody doing? Thank you so much for tuning in. And, you know, we are in a car, so if the audio quality is a little bad, go jump in a lake. Rainy days and Mondays always get me down. It is a Monday, and it's raining, and we're going to get so crunk tonight. <laughs> crunk. Well, i got to drive home, so. I'm going to get so get crunk tonight. Quarter crunk. Tommy's going to drive home. I'll be on the roof. <laughs> you know? Oh, my God. My cousin did that. Where My cousin went with me up to Key Wadden up in Sault Ste. Marie, you know, because I'm a big traveling comedian now. Well, you're huge. <laughs> And on the way back home, we're going down I-75, southbound I-75. It's um, Memorial Day weekend, right? Uh-huh. And uh, it's a Friday of Memorial Day weekend. So heading north is like, it's fucking bumper to bumper almost. But they're still moving. So my cousin looks down at his phone. And he goes, oh, hey, my buddy Jay's like, he's like almost parallel to us. Because I guess iPhones have that thing now. See where your friends are at. Oh, that's a good idea to... It's like stalk people, I yeah. guess. I don't know. That's a good idea to keep away from your yeah. side bitch, right? right? So I got my crew. Keep tabs <laughs> on her. I got, yeah. No, honey, right? we can't go to really? Cracker Barrel tonight. Susie's there. Well, it was funny because we're, I didn't know that thing existed, and I was with my cousin's mom, and we were doing like a family dinner at Lucky's. By the way, side piece, I'm sorry. <laughs> side bitch is very insensitive. Oh, whatever. And so she looks down at her phone, and she goes, oh, Michael's in Las Vegas right now. I don't know why. Because their phone tells her where, you know, that's what you do. You have, I don't know what it's called. Find your friends or something. Have you heard of this? No. iPhones do it. You can plug it in as an app. Find your friends. Oh, neat. So he calls his buddy, and he's like, hey, where are you at? His buddy tells him the mile marker, and he doesn't tell him that we're, uh, that we're like, almost parallel to him. We're going to 80. I have the cruise set at 80. Next thing I know, my cousin Mike climbs out of my car. <laughs> he has his butt on my on on the window while you're driving while I'm, and down southbound 75. That's amazing. And he's yelling and he's going like this. He's and, an action hero. And next thing I know, the phone rings. He jumps back and his friend's just dying. He saw us from the opposite side of the expressway. Wow. But I was like, holy shit. How did you not swerve and crash I based on I all the tears like, that were blurring your vision? Because you were so <laughs> it scared. It happened so fast. I was just like, stay straight, stay straight. Oh, my God. You're like Danny Glover, and he's Mel Gibson. <laughs> right? He's a lethal weapon. Right. And just, you're like, I'm too old for this shit. Like, next thing I know, I just look over, and his, like, his knees are, like, my eye level. <laughs> wow. And that's all I see is just knees. Everything else is hanging out the fucking window. He's acting about fifteen younger than he, fifteen years younger than he should. Well, about be. fifteen years ago, we were going to Canada, and uh, me and uh, Mexican Angela. Can we call her that on the <laughs> no, podcast? No, not allowed. Okay, okay, Angela. We're uh, in a car with Chris Conkle, and I don't remember who else was with us. But my cousin and his girlfriend, a couple well, of his friends, how'd were in the you car. get in a, another country with Conco? With you? <laughs> right, yeah. Wow, how'd you pull that off? Right. How many bribes did you have to pay? <laughs> don't say anything. <laughs> um, so we look, and my cousin Mike's driving, and he pulls up next to us, and he honks the horn. And I look over, and he's driving. We're going 75, 80, south 75. Next thing I know, he honks again, and I watch him climb over his girlfriend. He set the cruise, climbed over his girlfriend, and mooned the car next to him. <laughs> and she's driving with her left hand. I don't know how they fucking did it, but yeah. He should be a stunt driver. He's a police officer, but he should be a stunt driver. That's amazing. <laughs> I, so wacky car ride trips. Yeah. <laughs> that's what that's I like told that called. mooning story, I think, before about my coworker, Ken. I'll tell it again. Why not? Okay. He, he was coming home from work back when I used to work at a hardware store a while ago, and his name was Ken. 
and he was coming home from work one day and this truck in a this brand new truck two kids two teens really yucking it up <laughs> giggling their asses off I right think you did tell this but yeah keep going and so uh they stop at a stoplight in town ken looks over and one of them has his ass hanging out the window <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. It's always funny. So it's Ken, never not funny to show somebody your ass. So Ken has this junky white truck that he, that's about 15 years old and it's got three point million miles on it. Okay. <laughs> and so the, the, the light turns green. They start going. Kid still has his ass out the window. <laughs> so Ken was in a bad mood. He took I his, he took this, his yeah. white truck and sideswiped him. <laughs> banged him and the kid like almost fell out the window he said <laughs> and both of their faces they were just wide-eyed oh, and bet. they couldn't believe what had just happened you know <laughs> they just time, couldn't believe it first time anybody's ever not laughed and <laughs> I don't, it was a good rib though guy <laughs> right come on ken come on ken it was just a joke <laughs> it's me tyler so ken he's the one laughing this time because he he you know god I he showed be. them Jeez. He Ken's did. got he some did. anger issues, dude. Though. He got away with some shit. Like, <laughs> yeah, he probably should have went to jail for that. Uh, yeah, maybe. I, uh, I mean, that doesn't warrant. Oh, put the mic down. <laughs> yeah, can't be doing that. <laughs> uh oh, is he coming? Is he coming after us? The povo. He might be. I don't know. I couldn't uh, tell if he was turning around or not. Randy said, put the mic down. <laughs> oh, that would be awesome if he pulls me over and I just have the mic and I'm like, say something into the show. Yeah, say something. <laughs> you were being recorded. He's like, you're going to jail. Yeah. <laughs> so he he goes home. He, he only lived uh, like a mile or two down the road. And uh, I think the kid's got his, his license plate or something. That's the only way I, only thing I can hey, think uh, of. Officer, uh, we were showing our ass to this guy. And yeah. <laughs> so a few hours later, there's a knock on the door, and Ken, you know, he pretty much knew who it would be. He opens the door. It's the cops. And the two kids are st- uh, standing out there with him, and uh, one of the kid's dads was there. So it had to have been the dads whose truck it was. Right. Because it was a brand-new truck. There was no oh. way it was those kids. Right. And so Ken goes, good evening, officer. What can I do for you? You know, like an <laughs> asshole. Right. And uh, I smirking. Yeah. And the, the cop goes, I, he probably even knew the cop because they all came through the hardware store all the oh, time. Sure, so right. he probably even knew the cop. I don't remember. But uh, he says, did you ram these, these kids? These kids were saying you rammed them. And uh, Ken goes, I did, but... The reason I did it is because the one kid was mooning me. He had his ass out the window for about 30, you know how 45 minutes. When people show you your ass, you just hit them with your car. You just got to ram them with your vehicle. There's no know? other. There's no other option. You can't turn the other cheek yeah. if you wheel. Yeah, you can't just flip them off and drive away. They'll be laughing. Yeah. You can't yeah. let them laugh. They can't have the last They're laugh. Kids, for Christ's sakes. Don't let them laugh. Yeah. You can't let teens have any fun. Are you kidding me? Right. Got to put them in their spot. And the, so the kid who's who was doing the moon and was like, no, we weren't. No, we weren't. And Ken goes, yes, you were. And I can prove it. And the kid goes, how? He's, Ken goes, you have a heart over your tattooed on your left cheek. Oh, that's awesome. And the cop goes, well, let me see. Oh, that's and Ken hilarious. got off scot-free. That's crazy. And the dad was so pissed. He couldn't believe it. Yeah. I mean, I would be, too, because that doesn't warrant. <laughs> you wouldn't think so. But you should still get a reckless endangerment or something. If I did that, I'd still be in jail or something. Right. <laughs> something crazy. <laughs> yeah, because the cops know you're a danger to society. I know. That's manslaughter. Nobody died. <laughs> yeah, but maybe. Right. As I said, reckless endangerment, right? One day they will die, and it's because of you. Right. we got to put an end to this. You go spend life in prison with the guy with the dime bag of weed. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so last week I sent an online dating message. Do you remember that? It was a really bad message. So Yeah, kind of. There was of. no success. I was pretty drunk last no, week. Yeah, I recall. <laughs> I um, don't. That's do like... you remember when I was talking about... Well, Just ask? Yeah. I remember Just Ask. Just Ask. And she sang me some songs, and I, she found out I was poor, and she, that was yeah. it. Yeah. And then Your there was... usual. Yeah, yeah. There was the other one that we named Kayak or Gander Mountain. Do you remember her? <laughs> I do now. So... Why did we name her that? Because she liked outdoor stuff or something? She liked kayaking, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... 
<laughs> I got to put the clues together. You got to put those clues together, Blue. <laughs> Sorry, Fit I was on together. my 18th drink. You're, well, you're just recapping for anyone that <laughs> right. didn't listen last <laughs> me, week. Including me. Including you. You were completely <laughs> clueless, apparently. What'd you say to Kayak? Um, I said something to the effect of, uh, I'll go kayaking with you if you dive in and save me because I can't swim, something like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I do remember Anyways, the whole, we, like, you don't like the water thing. Yeah, just a b- brief we- recap. We hit it off a little bit, and we were talking back and forth. This that, is kayak? Yeah. Oh, did I know all this? Yeah, I, I talked about it last week. Oh, shit. I don't remember that. Okay. I, I'm getting well, kayak mixed with just ask. Okay, yeah. So, so uh, yeah, we hit it off. I talked to her for a little bit, and then I didn't hear from her for like a day or something. Uh-huh. So I, I said, "Oh, a, did I do something wrong?" No, yeah. I said, "Sorry <laughs> if I did something yeah. wrong." Blah blah blah. And I yelled at you for you, that. You, you berated <laughs> me, and then she she was like, "Here's my number," and so we talked all that day. She was at her brother's birthday party. Like, Nobody else is giving me attention. Come on, Randy. Yeah. She was at her brother's bir- surprise birthday party and was uh, texting me all day and nice. kind of being really flirty and stuff. And then I asked her out the next day, remember that? And there was no response. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do remember you saying that. And yeah. You haven't heard from her since? No, I have not. Oh, man. But I'm wondering if I should give it another, another How go. How long has it been? It's been like last Sunday. Sunday to Monday? Not, okay, so it's been over a week. Yeah, and I haven't texted her or yeah, anything. Just say, hey, what's up? That's it? Yeah, why not? Just leave it open. Don't apologize for anything. Well, I'm not going to apologize. Just say, hey, what's up? Yeah. What, what, what's wrong with that? That's just opening no, the lines of communication, right? I'm right? going to do it right be, now. You're then. not being a creeper. You're not like, hey, sorry, I asked you out. <laughs> right. You don't have to do that. Just say, hey, what's up? I mean, what's She'll the worst? She'll decide whether she wants to message back or not. Yeah. I, I also called her an eight last week, and that's a mistake. She's definitely a nine. So. Oh, I thought you were going to give her less for not calling you back. <laughs> well, I should, God damn it. <laughs> she went down to a three. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what's up, huh? Yeah, just hey, comma, what's up? Hey, comma, what's up? Question mark. Question mark. That's it. Shoot your shot. Got to shoot your shot. Out. Wait it out. Hashtag wait it out. <laughs> we'll see if old kayak responds. <laughs> Oh, God. What a terrible name. What a horrible name. <laughs> I remember saying Gander Mountain yeah. now, and you were like, no. <laughs> Gander Mountain. I've been thinking a lot lately, Tommy. We should uh, we should open up a convenience store in a barely town. In a barely? A oh, barely you mean town. Like a village? Yeah, a town that barely exists. Right. I got gotcha. you. Those places are awesome. Tom you- and Randy's. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just be the two old guys behind the counter. Yes, you'd be surrounded What's by up, bo- kids. Hey, one student at a time. You'd be one s- at a time. You'd be surrounded by booze all day. So oh that's your dream. Yeah, you'd be happy. Wouldn't remember like, shit. The one I go into all the time. You know what they have there? Just like every other barely town convenience store. Oh, uh, they make their own pizza. Oh yeah, that's the best. Yeah, it is the best. And guess what? This particular pizza. This heat lamp warm pizza, yeah. uh, it's got Jesus on it. It's Jesus pizza. It's got <laughs> a picture like of Jesus right on the oh, side. Oh, wow, really? Jesus pizza. Wow, voted number one by Jesus, huh? Yeah, it's got to. God's pizza. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus Christ says, oh, <laughs> hell yeah. So I go into this. <laughs> Jesus Christ says, hell yeah. I so, like that. I don't know if that's ever been said before. Good yeah. job, Randy. He's like. And he's like Lucifer's like what you say? He's like Stone Cold St- Steve Austin, and he's like, oh hell yeah! And he jump dumps a bunch of wine over you his face. Say, For heaven's sake, this pizza is amazing. Ah, <laughs> that was very Christ-like of you, my hey. son. Right. Hey. So for Jesus to say hell is just a, it's a conundrum. My brain can't comprehend. Oh, I'm sorry. So I go into this store, and usually the guy behind the counter is this overweight dude. Probably he's probably. God, he's probably 28 years old, but he looks like he's 54. <laughs> and he's... He looks like a Mark David Chapman kind of guy. I don't know what that means. Oh. And and he he's always wearing these graphic tees. And, like, the one he wears all the time is, like, I don't need anger management. Just don't piss me off. <laughs> and I walk in there and... Master- always seemed like a threat. Yeah. And Master of Puppets is blurring over the stereo, you know? Like... Volume 20. Right. <laughs> like, yes, I could get behind that. <laughs> Want to be friends? 
So today I walk in, and oh my god, it was a completely different scene. Uh oh, he got a girlfriend or something, huh? No, no, no. I'm thinking the dude that owns the store hit, put his daughter to work there. Oh. Because oh my god. I hate to be that guy, but I'm going to be that guy. She looks like Princess, Princess Jasmine from Aladdin. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> You're like, I can, can show, show you the, the world. world. Take you no. under Shining, shimmering, splendid. splendid Don't fuck up my lyrics Don't you dare close your eyes <laughs> Don't you dare close your eyes It's my favorite Disney song It is, it's the best song It is, and you messed it up, second line what I'm a sorry Loser I mean, she <laughs> How looks How are you going to impress Jasmine if you can't remember the lyrics to her? your guys' song? That's a very good question, you know what happened? <laughs> it's I... so racist <laughs> Is it? You think so? No. I just said Mexican Mexican Angela 10 yeah. minutes ago. But I said she looks like Princess Jasmine. What's wrong with that? I She's beautiful. Like, but then Roseanne said that lady looked like... <laughs> looked like somebody from Planet... Of, do you understand how the difference there? Yeah, I guess. I'm not going to get know. into that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to get into that. You don't have to edit it, but I'm not going to get into that. Yeah. I, I stand by my... Uh, she looks like Princess Jasmine. What you're saying, she looks like a very pretty Indian girl. Yes. I guess if, if people think Middle that, Eastern. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Yes. Okay. I mean, yeah. I mean, Jasmine was a cartoon. This girl wasn't a cartoon, was she? she Not that I know of. She didn't look drawn there. I, I wasn't in uh, <laughs> Cool World or anything. <laughs> you weren't on acid? No, okay. I don't think so. All right. But boy, oh boy. So th- so uh, I bought Old it. Old enough for you to be saying boy, oh boy? Yeah, I think so. She works. <laughs> she she works at a liquor store. So she's at least twenty one. I think you can be eighteen. It sell liquor. I think so. I think state law says you got to be eighteen. Oh, really? Yeah, because hmm. I sold it at VG's. Interesting. People at your place that gamefully employs you can sell it at, at eighteen. Mm, I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. I sold it. Maybe the laws have changed. I would say, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm just going to assume she's 21. Okay. <laughs> she, I bought a, a little shot of uh, Captain Morgan, and she carded me. Oh. I'm like, hey, girl, hey. She, she knows how to bring back business. Huh? I'm like, why don't you just ask for my number? <laughs> right. That's the only reason I can think of that the owner has his daughter in there. Cause did, she, did she wince when she saw your age? No. Oh. Well, that's she, probably a good thing. Too, no, huh? she didn't. I mean, this. Th- there's some. I mean, the cream of the crap comes into that store. Cream of the crap. You should see the the mongrels that that. Well, Is this in your town, USA? It, uh, it's outside of okay. town. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so Michigan's kind of weird. There's only a few major cities, and then there's a bunch of little small towns, and in between the major cities and the little small towns, out in the middle of nowhere, periodically there's liquor stores and mm-hmm. convenience stores. Because why not? Right. Well, yeah, those people that live out in the middle of nowhere, they gotta, they can't go somewhere to get yeah. their stuff. But I'm thinking, yeah, I I probably if my daughter looked like her, she's all of 130 pounds maybe. I would not have her all alone in a liquor store with the scummy scum that that wander. Did she have the jasmine outfit on? Oh no, she did not. She had the hammer pants with the midriff. <laughs> she, she, she was like, "I'm too legit to quit." Hey, hey. She's like, "Can't touch us." <laughs> yeah, probably. Damn it. There's no, there's no possible way to ever like. Hit on her or ask her out, though. Right. Because she's, she's a retail employee. Yeah. You just can't. You can't be one of those guys that hits <laughs> on the cashier. can't stoop that low. <laughs> can't stoop that low. I think there should be an app for uh, retail, empl- retail customers to hit on retail employees. Right. Just have a dating app for that. Like, I work at this store. And then that way it's not awkward. It's not awkward. Yeah, and you, you know that they're that store. that they're into dating and whatnot. And they're single, maybe. And, uh, yeah. So I work at blah, blah, blah. I work at Meyer. I work at Walmart. Uh, my likes are sweatpants and <laughs> chili cheese dogs. Cigarettes. And cigarettes. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, Just ask, Teehee. <laughs> I like me some chili cheese dogs and cigarettes. I don't know what the name of this retail app will, would be, but... <laughs> retail. 
Oh, yeah, there it is. Retail. The only A-I-L. The only dating app to hit on the cashiers of your dreams. <laughs> Just one of the most worst things for the Me Too movement and the, the feminist is retail. <laughs> yeah. That's not appropriate. We're erasing the Me Too movement with every word we say right now. <laughs> Funny. Yeah, there's been no response from uh, Gander Mountain. Well, it's been 45 seconds. So. It's been 10 minutes. Is it really? Wow. Yeah. Time flies when you're having fun. Huh? Yeah, absolutely. I don't think she's going to respond. Like, why would you give me your phone number? Seri- oh, Jesus. She just responded. See, Randy? God damn it. What'd she say? What'd she say? She said, not much. How are you? See, look at You didn't have to be like, sorry for asking you out. <laughs> I know. That's <laughs> probably what going, I... Yeah, it's probably what going. I... Yeah, don't even bring it up. I won't. Not much. How are you? Hmm. <laughs> You're just recording this podcast I'm, about you. <laughs> I'm just talking about you right now. Are your fucking ears bleeding, woman? <laughs> How do you? What do you think about the nickname Kayak? <laughs> you like Kayak? You like Gander Mountain better? <laughs> yeah, help us choose. Yeah, help us choose, please. <laughs> um, we're almost there, aren't we? No, 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 we got a ways. We got okay. About twenty more minutes, I think. Do we really? Yeah, yeah I guess so. Well, we can go the long way if you want. I don't no, care. we don't have to. Not much. How are you? Oh, I should tell her what we're doing. Are you going to k- get killed by those two semis? I think so. Are you ready for this? Y'all ready for this? Death, 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 death. Y'all ready for this? Death, 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 Yeah, these semis are, I think they're drag racing each other. I hate that when they do that. There you go. Get over, buddy. Get over in front of your pal there. You won. You won Sarai. What is that what it is? Sarai I'm trucking. I'm doing pretty good. Happy to hear from you. No, I don't know. No. I don't know what I'd say. Just, I'm just going to tell her what I'm doing. Oh, look at that, Randy. Just be honest. Look at that. Just be straight up and honest. Yeah, see how that works. Straight up, straight up, Randy. That's what they call me. (laughs) Straight up. Oh, real Randy. I feel like I should leave with a question. Yeah, like right, like you don't want (laughs) to, you don't want to leave it open ended. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For her not to respond again. Yeah. I don't know what you'd say. (laughs) I'll slip here today. Yeah. (laughs) Oh man. Pretty pretty shitty Monday, eh? <laughs> Just like the stupidest. Yeah, I already asked, hey, what's up? And she said, not much. I can't ask, how's your fucking Monday? Right, right. How do you talk to girls, Tommy? <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. Never oh, knew. Oh, no. Never knew. Never paid attention, you know? Oh, I'll just ask her what she's up to. <laughs> she already said not much. You already asked her what's up. Oh, yeah. What's up? <laughs> Just don't. Like, every time she replies, what are you doing? What's up? How's it hanging? <laughs> Got anything going on? <laughs> <laughs> Same question, different words. Oh, damn. I don't know what to say. Huh. Yeah, I know, huh? Well, maybe you don't have to say anything. Maybe you can just let it, let it hang there, and then if she responds, then, then you know she's really interested. It's good she responded, though. Maybe maybe I'll type something stupid like getting pretty rowdy for a Monday night. We'll yeah. see if she responds. Is that what you put? Getting rowdy on a Monday No, night? I didn't put that. <laughs> stupid. I'm not a stupid man. <laughs> Mama always said. Speaking of dating, Tommy, I, t- I, I went to... Uh, I had this bold idea that I'd find, like, a cosmopolitan online uh-huh. and, like, see if they have... Like, don't they have stupid quizzes or something? I, th- I would assume so. Yeah, I was going to do that, and we were going to make fun of it and stuff. Okay. yeah, yeah. But instead, I found this, which is almost even better, because I need <laughs> this in my life, and I, I feel like you do, too. Uh-oh. We're always making fun of these millennial words. Yeah. So here's a comprehensive list of every dating term you need to know in 2018. Okay. Caspering. Wow, when you ghost somebody? It's a friendlier type of ghosting. Jesus. The person... Ghosting isn't a, already a word that's newer? 
the person hasn't asked you out again, but they usually reply very nicely to your text. Oh, I just got Casper. <laughs> Fuck. Got Casper. Damn it. <laughs> we got to call this uh, girl Wednesday. Yeah. Date or view. A date that feels... Well, it wouldn't be Wednesday. Why did you say that? That's Wednesday Adams, right? Yeah, What's I don't know what... What's name and Casper? Casper. No, the chick's name. You what know, chick? You know, what's her face? That one that was dating Casper in the movie. Do well, you remember the movie? Yeah, that was uh, that was that was Wednesday Adams. Was it? Whoever plays her, I yeah, can't think yeah, of her what's name. What's her name? She's a black I don't snake know. moan girl. Yeah. What's her fucking name? <laughs> I know, Christina Ricci. Ah, there it is. Yeah. Good work. A I date can't remember view. what we talked about last week, but I can remember Christina Ricci's well, name. A date review, Tommy. There's still some brain left. As a date that feels less butterfly inducing and more like you should have brought your resume. A date review? Oh, like an interview. Yeah, okay. you're barraged with a line of questions about your life and family. Well, that's just good. Isn't, that, isn't that, that like a date. first date, though? <laughs> I mean, Jesus. What's your name? Where are you from? How are you doing? God, there's a pre-date. Now there's a date review. <laughs> What's your name? Where are you from? Who's your daddy? Uh, cushioning. When you keep flirting with a few cushions, a.k.a. other prospects, just in case your current relationship implodes and you need to find someone to soften the fall oh, fast. That's what we call cushioning. terrible people. Terrible. Douchebags. <laughs> right. Uh, pretty much. Oh, I love this. Dick sand. An extremely powerful force that can make a woman become so preoccupied with the guy she's hooking up with that she loses sight of her own identity and disappears on all her friends. Wow, she dick sand. Dick sand. She got caught in that dick sand. Oh, that's funny. Uh, <laughs> love bombing. Huh. When someone drops over-the-top affection and gifts on you during the beginning of the relationship as an attempt to build trust... But also to establish an unhealthy level of control over you for the long haul. Couldn't it be one or the other? What do you mean? Why does it got to be both? What? Like, I get it. Like, you shouldn't, like, drop a bunch of gifts right away. But they said to establish trust, but then gain control. Yeah. <laughs> like, couldn't it be one or the other? Why does it got to be both? Yeah. Aren't you just trying to woo a girl? Right. I mean, I would, shouldn't you, know, you, like. Maybe that's what I did maybe, wrong, that yeah. I never fucking wanted to. Hey, here's a bunch of gifts. I just used my personality, which never helped. But nonversation. Oh, oh this God. is pretty much what's what's happening with me and yeah, uninspired Wait, banter so. or no, no, uninspired banter or small oh, talk newbie. with yeah, yeah, uninspired banter or small talk with a dating app match that pretty much goes nowhere, doesn't really appear to either party, and fails to encourage a dates. Yeah, what's it called? Nonversation. Nonversation. Having a bunch of nonversation. Huh? Uh, the last one, zombieing. <laughs> the attempt to come back into an ex's life after successfully ghosting out of the relationship months prior. The most common method is sending a random hey text. That's hilarious. That's you're almost zombieing her. You never got into it, but yeah, I mean it's only been a week, so. <laughs> wow, well, that's fun. I should probably pull up my GPS now. All right. We're going to take a quick little short little break, and uh, you're listening to The Miserable, Retail. Rancid, <laughs> Salamis. Welcome back to the sausage. How's everybody doing? Hey, Lynx. That's what we'll call you guys because we're a sausage and you're the Lynx. Oh, I kind of like that. Listen to me. I'm listen a regular to Bob Evan over here. Huh? You're a Bob Evan over there for sure. <laughs> no S. You're not a Bob Evans. Just a Bob Evan. <laughs> Singular. Kids not eat plural. for free on Tuesday, all right? Do they? They used to. I don't know if they still do. Christ, mm. I'd go to Bob Evans all the time. Though. They got some good biscuits and gravy. I like Bob Evans. Fun fact, I saw Tommy's mom and pop there 
at Bob Evans. You did time. when? You never told me that. Oh, a few months ago. You need to tell me when. when they With had their my, grandchild. I was just going to say they had to have little Ed there. They sure did. I don't know what they were eating, and they didn't see me, but I saw them. They, oh, you didn't say hi? Well, I, I they were getting they were leaving. I didn't see them until I was sitting down. I wasn't going to stand up and start screaming at them like oh, a Randy, fool. Randy, you should have trotted over and gave my mom a hug and my dad a bear hug. And, oh, wolf. And they love you, Fucking Randy. wolf. They're one of the couple people on the earth that love you. Oh, my God. Nobody loves me. That's been established. (laughs) Do me a favor. If you do kind of love me, or at least my (laughs) voice, join our Facebook group. Hey, what's that called? It's called Miserable Retail Slave. (laughs) It's on the Facebook.com. That's marketing, huh? You can go ahead and join that, please. And thank you. You can follow me on the Instagram. I'm trying to do a real great job on there, posting photographs. And I'm just shitting all over the podcast at comedy Tommy shows. Tommy just he hates everything about this podcast, so fuck him. Oh, I get off stage tonight, and Randy didn't realize I was still recording on my uh, phone, and he goes, Damn, you crushed tonight. Yeah, so that's a mistake. <laughs> He's like, you should put this on Patreon after I said that. Well, yeah, I felt like I did well tonight, and the crowd really liked me, and I got some claps. And he did a pretty good job. He didn't promote the podcast. He uh, held court with his fellow comedians and shit all over the podcast, so that happened too. (laughs) In a fun uh, way, they knew I loved it. No, they didn't. I said I I don't like podcasts. They put me to sleep. But people like our podcast. I think I don't. Yeah, what an ass. I even said I like it enough to go over to Randy's house every week, didn't I? Uh, I guess. So, <laughs> so here's what's happening in my life. I hate all the women in the world. <laughs> That's what's happening. Uh, Ruby's was maybe going to show up. She didn't. Time and she distance, didn't. Randy. Time, time, time and distance. distance. When you come to her town. Approximately five minutes away. <laughs> time and distance. I'm uh, not going to shit on her. I, uh, Ruby's has always been cool to me. So. Um, what else? What else? Oh, yeah. The, the Gander Mountain, who I texted right before we went to break. Oh, uh, kayak. Old kayak there. What were we going to call her again? We, we came up with a different. I, who can I tell? Don't know, on the way who can here. tell? So we were texting back and forth, and all of a sudden she goes, LOL. Can you send me a contact pic again? <laughs> and I'm like, OMG. You should have sent her somebody else. When the OMG, I already sent this girl a contact pic. That means she probably deleted me. Yeah, she had no idea who she was responding to. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's what, yeah. I laugh at your pain. So I sent her a contact pic, and I asked her a question or whatever to get a response, and she, she goes, oh, thanks, because I got a new phone and my photographs did not transfer. <laughs> I love the new phone. Hey, got a new uh, phone. Like, that's everybody's excuse, but it's the best excuse. Uh, and then like, I was... Isn't it? You can't, you can't argue with the got a new phone. You can't say, no, can't, you didn't. I can't. I told you to ask her what kind of phone did she get. So I responded to that text, and uh, she did not respond the rest of the night. I sent even sent a follow up text. She did not respond the rest of the night, which really leads me to believe she saw my pig and was like, "Oh my fucking god, that, that guy, guy. <laughs> that guy, <laughs> very nice." I'm 27 and attractive. What do I have to do with that over there? <laughs> that Q-tip looking fucker. That piece of fucking refuse. I can't call you a Q-tip because that was Jim Gaffigan's first joke that he ever made on stage. I can't remember where I heard that, but somebody asked in an interview, what was your first joke you've ever told? And he said, I'm pretty white. My mother was a Q-tip. But it kind of <laughs> it, it kind of gives me solace, Tommy. I like going to comedy shows because I like I like the environment. You like me shitting on the podcast. I didn't shit. I mean, I guess it's funny to me and you and our listeners for me. No, to you shit totally on it. shit on it. But you, I, I think you had, they could tell that I was you had, I two, had a heartfelt like you had disdain. Two, shut up. You had two little friends there that were eating up your every word, and you completely shat all over it. And I hate you forever. Well, new comedians talk to me, Randy. Okay. <laughs> they were really good though. Both of, uh, well, one of one of the guys didn't go up, but I, I, I did realize that I uh, had met him before online. So I like them. They were good people. Yeah, Even, yeah. It was. Uh, they'll never it was listen to the podcast. Jason he and Alana. 
Yeah, yeah. And Alana had a pretty decent set you, tonight. I thought she was pretty you funny. You just pooed all over it. By the way, Alana kind of looks like Ruby's a little bit. Yeah, I yeah. I was like, hey, girl, hey. Yeah. <laughs> but I couldn't. But because, you're there. Yeah, because yeah. Jason, yeah. her boyfriend. And I there. like him. He was cool. Yeah, they were very cool people. Anyways, or as they say on Let's Trick, get drunk and talk comics <laughs> Hemingways. <laughs> Can I talk about the show real quick? Not about my set. God because we already damn has, it. We already established that Randy said I crushed. You've been talking all night. But... <laughs> Uh, nope. There was a guy like oh this is God. this is in Lansing. Let it's at Max Bar, first. and I love it. I love Max Bar. I am just gonna edit you. Okay, go ahead, Randy. All powerful, Randy. Go ahead. That's I, right. You're gonna make me lose my train of thought. Good. You don't need no thoughts. You don't train anyways. Go ahead. I'm putting my mic down. Okay. So it kind of gave me solace though, because at the show, I watched. Uh, I watched a man completely eat shit when approaching a girl. Oh, is this what R- Randy nudges me? I'm watching. Uh, was it? It was Alana that was on stage. And, uh, Ran- and Randy, was she on stage at the time? Yeah, because okay. I thought you were nudging me about something she said. Oh. And so, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, that was kind of funny, you know. Uh, and you're, and I was like, wow, Randy thought that was really funny. I was like, I thought it was pretty funny, but you were like bent over holding your gut laughing yeah and then he goes i'm gonna tell you about it later and then he has tears running down his cheeks and i was like what why why do you make me wait for later like (laughs) well you said i just tears was the depression taking hold of me how (laughs) dare you mock me but i i watched this attractive girl probably i don't know the girl with the rug she had an attractive face she was wearing a, a bathroom rug though she definitely was. I swear to God, I didn't see it happen, but afterward, Randy goes, it was that girl, and I look over, it, and this girl, imagine your favorite bathroom towel that you cut a hole in. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And that much. was it. It was like this, it was this gray, like this really weird color of gray, shade of gray with like off-white stripes, and it looked like she just cut a hole in it. Yeah. <laughs> It looked like she was waiting for a guy to come up and be like, flip it over her head and be like, can you wear it as a cape while I pay you? (laughs) I don't know. I didn't get it. It wasn't a jumper. She had a fun face, Which jumpers are idiots, too. Like, an idiot. I don't like jumpers. She had one of those faces that that made you go, oh, God, look at that. I don't look. I actually never even seen her face. To be honest, I only saw her from behind. You were just checking out that hot bod. It looked like, like, she looked like she was wearing a rectangular rug. (laughs) Yeah, true. That's all it looked like. So, (laughs) Did she even have shoes on? I didn't even notice. I didn't notice that. But Hemingway's, she she went over to the, the bar there. And uh, this this douche in this red shirt, he saunters over. And uh, this that, is what you're laughing. At. Yeah, I yeah, figured yeah, it yeah, was yeah. some guy that. Oh, tried to for talk sure, to for sure. And he saunters over, and he was actually there with some a dude that went up there on stage later. Okay. So, but whatever. He was wearing a red shirt. He saunters over with his douchebag face, and he's like. She had been standing there for a while, and it, it she crossed. She was waiting to get a drink, right? She was waiting to get a drink, and the, the bartender was over off to the side playing on his fucking phone. Yeah, kind of a weird bartender. I love Max, but this is a new bartender. And he yeah, was, he and it kind of crossed my mind. I'm like, I should totally get the bartender's attention for this girl, right? So the, as I was thinking this, this douche walks over. He's like, oh, where's the bartender? <laughs> you know, and he throws his hands in the air and he's looking around and she points, you know, he's over there. Yeah, he's texting. What do you think people yeah. do when they're in their He's 20s? over there. <laughs> he's like, oh. <laughs> he's a young dude. The bartender was probably, what, 22, 23? Yeah, probably. And, and she, she goes, he's over there. And the dude goes, oh, you want to go outside and smoke? <laughs> This is what this guy says to this girl. How did girl. you hear that? I'm standing right next to you. I was listening to a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Radio. I'm focused on the whole fucking thing. You were focused on the girl I, and the rug. I was focused on the girl. I the saw, rug was really tying the room together. It really was. It was feng shui in. <laughs> total was feng shui. she ordering a white Russian? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> that's the dude. That's the Big Lebowski reference. I got it. to you by... I know you got it, but... So, so he goes... Won't go outside and smoke, you know, like a douchebag will. 
And I'm just like, oh, my God, what is he even doing? And predictably, she says, no, I don't smoke. Right. And even if she did. Yeah. And, <laughs> and he goes, oh, okay. And just saunters And away. then he walked away. He didn't That's even get okay. his drink. That's okay, though, because he just took rejection with a, with a, with a good heart, right? Punchline. I saw the girl walk out there after the show, and, and she was smoke. out there on the smoke balcony for, like, an hour. Was she smoking? I don't know. You wouldn't let me go out there. You're too busy holding court. What? We went out there. No, no. This was She left before we went out there. I'm like, oh, what? when I said, I want to go out and have a cigarette, you're like, oh, let me talk shit about people. Randy was going to have a cigarette? Did you hear that, Ruby? You reminded me. Of Michael Scott from The Office, Steve Carell. Thank you very much. I don't, that know, moment. I don't know any of that. You don't well, know my, who my Steve kids, Carell is, motherfucker? I know who Steve Carell is, but my 14-year-old would get that reference. She loves The Office right now. <laughs> Why are they cooler than you? Because I helped raise them. No. <laughs> the Beloved has does more. Does not compute. The, the Beloved has more pull than I do. Yeah, she's got more pull than and you And my do. kids are way funnier than I'll ever be. Yeah, well, yeah. I, mean, I love it. I love that. I love it. They I love it. They up every day. So, yeah, uh, Rubies, she's dead to me. Uh, <laughs> Gander Mountain Kayak, she's dead to me. I've, I've got a bunch of empty vessels in my phone right now. I've got, the, I've got the phone numbers of so many women right now, and that was a dream back when I was 18 years old, and now I have them, and I've got nothing. I'm well, still a lonely well, fuck. And let me let me paint the picture for Ruby's. You met her online four years ago. <laughs> four years ago. Three no. years ago. No, no. It, it's, I mean, it's been a year and a half. Really? Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> four years well, ago. I just, it, she seems like she's been around for a long time. Well, I mean, I don't want to say things, but every time I did Max, the last three times I did Max up until tonight, she's came right. Yeah, probably. This would have been her fourth time there, or third time. Third, probably. Third time. She she was uh, your guest at my wedding. Yeah. Yeah. She's met your parents. Yeah. Wow. And, and you know and what? She my, stood you up tonight. You know what? She didn't even tell you she wasn't coming. That's the worst part of the whole thing. My rubies, mom, rubies, rubies, rubies. I, I hope you have a good. I, I've always liked rubies, and I know that we have that joke where I'm like time and distance right. and stuff. But she's always been a very classy lady the, and very nice. The so. best part of the whole thing is my mom and dad love her, like absolutely. I'm sure, love they're her. hoping that you'll take that. that no, you'll I mean, no, that's not been the case in other women I've dated before, and we we don't have to say names. But they absolutely <laughs> love her. And, like... Yeah, she's a fun girl. And my mom said, you know what? It seems like she's always been around. Well, that's she just what I fits right in. I th uh, yeah, right. And I thought she'd been there for four years, so... Yeah. That's huh. that's that's why I'm smitten Rubies, with... you're dropping the ball here. That's why I'm smitten with Randy the had the engagement ring in his pocket. Oh, I'd show. marry her tomorrow <laughs> if given half the chance. But she she's like, oh, no, no. Well, maybe she's maybe she's distancing herself. Maybe, <laughs> whatever. That got sad. Oh, <laughs> that got sad. Uh, road trips are fun, though, right? I don't blame you, Rubies. I mean, do what you do, what you do, Rubies. Do I know she still listens? I think she still listens. I don't know. I don't know. Do what you do, Randy. It will be all right. Road trips are fun, though, right? Yeah, <laughs> really fun. This yeah. has been great. Yeah, it's been And the show's been great. Okay, uh, that's what I was going to talk about the show. Um, so the host gets up, Pat Seaver. Love Pat Seaver. Look up Pat Seaver online. He is one of the funniest comedians. He's out of Lansing. He's doing huge things. He's going to be huge. Um, he's a great dude. Um, he gets up and he starts the show. Because it's, it's Dan Curry, Robert Jenkins, Pat Seaver, and Nick Leodorf. Those are the four guys that run Max now. And it is Max Monday Night Comedy Night in Lansing every Monday. And they have the best comedians all over the nation. People come all over the nation just for this show. It's a great show. I, I What I do about, about four times a year, I think I do it. And uh, anyway, so Pat goes up and starts the show. And it's, it's college town. It's East Lansing, Michigan. And uh, there's some douche in the middle of the audience that keeps yelling out shit. To Pat. Oh yeah, yeah. 
So Pat respectfully, Pat's not the kind of guy, like Pat's kind of like, on stage and off stage, Pat is really relaxed. He wants to be. Oh, I'm going to interrupt because you're going to forget this. There's always been an old couple that went there, and yeah. I always think they escaped from the asylum. Like, they, oh my god, they're the best. They look like the the two old people people from the M Night Shyamalan movie, The Visit. The psychopaths. Yes, they do, and they talk yes. like that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, and they always bring a big stuffed Doberman pincher with them. Yes, and the and and, the- and Tommy engaged with the woman. Today in an epic conversation, we found out the stuffed dog's name was Pavlov. They always sit in the front row, and she acts. She talks to you, does not break character, she as if the dog is real. As if the dog is real. As if the dog is. Well, real. last time that me and Randy went down was it last month or was it two months ago? I did the Max show. No, it was last month. Yeah, Pavlov wasn't there. It wasn't there. And so I made the joke to Christina. That's the old lady's name. I made, I made the joke to Christina. I said, oh, I thought you put him down. And she, oh, no, no, no. She said, what happened was we were out running errands, and we just didn't have time to go pick him up. And I'm not getting that she treats it like a real dog yet, because this is the first time I ever talked to her, although we've seen her numerous times. And I goes, oh, I just thought, you, you know, and I kind of got it. So I was like, oh, I thought you'd just keep him in the trunk. And she gasps. Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah. No. Yeah. Like and she, we take him everywhere, you know. And and we talk. I talked to her for what forty minutes, as if this dog was real. That's an exaggeration. However, she did make a joke okay, 20 about twenty minutes. At least twenty minutes. You did mention at one point uh, her leaving the dog in the car with the windows up, and she was just aghast about it. Oh yeah, because she literally talks to every. She's like Andy Kaufman, like she doesn't break character about this dog, and you don't know if she really thinks this dog's real. Yeah. Like and so, the dog's sitting there, and I was like, "Can I pet him? Does he bite?" And she doesn't laugh. She goes, "Oh no, he don't bite." <laughs> what yeah. is going on here? Anyways, tell your tale about the hecklers. Oh, right. So uh, Pat, Pat gets up and uh, he starts the show. And Ten seconds into the show, some guy just yeah, starts probably. yelling shit out. And Pat politely reminds him that this is a comedy show and he should be quiet. Yells a couple more things throughout Pat's set. Whatever. Next guy gets up. The guy's yelling. Robert Jenkins, who is a six foot eight, maybe six foot seven. Is he that tall? Six foot six. I would say six foot six, six foot seven. Uh, huge, humongous black dude goes, Let me go next. I'm going to shut this motherfucker up. Right. <laughs> so Robert goes up, and uh, the guy does not talk through Robert's set at all. Robert is an empowering figure. Empowering. And- and Robert, Robert gets off stage. The next guy goes up, and the guy starts heckling again. He's like, so Robert yells from the back of the room, "Shut the fuck up, dog!" Yeah, motherfucker, shut the fuck up. <laughs> he definitely said dog. Did though. he say dog? That's yeah. awesome. And so, like, the night goes on or whatever. Dan Curry, who runs the show, gets up, and the guy's talking. And Dan said, and Dan's like, why don't you talk when the huge black guy was on stage? <laughs> like, are, right. you, are you afraid? <laughs> like, so it's just, it was just a running joke throughout the night that this motherfucker, and then I guess he left. Like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, he yeah. Was, was he there for my set? I don't know. He didn't talk I don't, about I don't know. I don't think so. Cause I told you if the crowd starts talking, you need to go ballistic on him. Yeah. But Dan did that. Yeah. Well, before Dan like tore him apart. And it's funny the power of the stage because like every comedian that went up there, other than uh, Robert Jenkins, is like this overweight and dorky and like no offense, but come on, you know. But they they shut that shit down real. Oh quick. yeah, because Robert's built, you know, he works out, you know, he's a solid, you know, solid body figure, and he's, he, and he's solid, a solid body figure, and he's, you know, and he he commands the stage and. <laughs> It just happens that he's black, you know. And it's, it's, it's like it the just guy happens is, that way. Well, and, and that's what everybody. Was, and that's what Dan pointed out too. Is like, oh, you didn't, you didn't talk during the big black guy's set, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. 
So that was interesting, but Randy said that I had the set of the night. You did. I thought you did. I Thank thought you, you had the set I mean, of the and night. And these guys, a lot of the guys that get on, you don't get on Max unless you're, uh, you know, they, they pick and choose people pretty well. So I felt like I did. Road trips, Tommy. I, I love them. I do. I like going to your comedy shows because they're usually adventures. Something usually happens. Yeah. You know? And, it, well, one thing tonight that we've noticed, most of the time when you go on a road trip with me to a comedy show, I'm very um, spastic about the show coming up, right? Yeah. Yeah, usually. And tonight I wasn't. No. Tonight I wasn't. And you said I crushed tonight. And I think that that's something that uh, I try to convey to people. It's like, I can tell before I get to the show whether I'm going to crush or just do okay. Like, sometimes I bomb, and sometimes I bomb, and I hate when I bomb, but most of the time I can pull it out enough to where I don't bomb. Well, but today I just felt good all day. So I, I felt good. I felt like I was going to do well. I felt like I had the confidence, and then I went up there, and yeah. I mean, I'm glad that you say that I crushed because I felt like I did really well. They really Yeah, you had me. the best crowd response all night. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm not a stand-up comedian, however. You're not. I'm not. However, I, I, I dance a little bit in the comedy industry, if you will. This is what that podcast is. <laughs> Open micers. I have more clout than you, motherfuckers. Motherfuckers. 